Jesse, tell me what it's like to do this, to live on a farm, to be homeschooled, to hang out with your mom all day. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. So now what kind of subjects are you studying? Math, worthy wise, easy grammar, and spelling. How about math, language arts, language arts, science, easy. don't science. forget science. Science. History with dad. Do you know anything about history? Marco uh, Polo. You know Marco Polo? Who was Marco Polo? He was a traveler. Where did he go? He went from Venice, Italy to Beijing, China. Baby. Wow. Jesse likes China. It took him three years. Jesse, how you like living on a farm? Do you? Have what you ever you not like lived on a farm? When? Two. She just burped on me. <laughs> it didn't even have any goats. No, but we had chickens. Jesse, tell me this. Which goat is your favorite? This one? Sunjet. Yeah, and what do you like about Sunjet? She's pretty. She plays tag with you? I could run off and she'd come behind me and go, <laughs> <laughs> We feel that just because you're going to raise an animal, whether it's a hog, a cow, or a chicken, for meat, that the animal shouldn't be treated with respect and be able to uh, roam around in their natural habitat, you know, during the, the time that they are on this earth. Uh, we, for uh, the cows, for example, we don't cut their horns off. Uh, we let the horns grow. There's two methods of doing it, uh, well three actually, you can scoop them out as a calf, you can chemically remove them, uh, you can burn them with about a thousand degree iron which cauterizes the veins around the horn to stop them from growing. Once they, they get grown like this on the cow, you can take uh, bolt cutters and cut them off. But those horns are actually a blood supply to them, so uh, they're, me they're meant to be there. So we don't touch them. We're just a little careful when we go in there and work around them so that we don't get hit with them. But uh, God put them on their head, let them stay there. Yeah, we also uh, decided that dehorning wasn't a good idea because it's about like pulling your fingernails out. It's very painful and it's a big shock to the cows and stunts them a lot. And then you can't work with them because they're scared of you. And we'd like to have our animals not scared of us so they can, we can work around them. You are a ham, look at you. <laughs> well, it represents a tremendous opportunity for South Carolina in a couple of different ways. 2% of the food that we eat in South Carolina comes from South Carolina, so there we have a tremendous opportunity for growth. From the organic angle, we have, I would say, right now, eight or nine organic farms in the entire state compared to 150 or more in North Carolina. So. We have a situation where, mar uh, where the market is demanding uh, organic food. Walmart is going to move organic food onto their shelves and has started already. So this is an opportunity for South Carolina farmers to satisfy modern consumers. And uh, the great thing is, is the free market supports, uh, supports this. We don't need new laws. We don't need uh, new taxes. We just need uh, more farmers. <laughs> <laughs> Most days it is fun. It can be trying though. Um, organic is not the easiest thing to do. Um, you know, we've lost a lot of crops this year to deer. Um, you know, there's not a whole lot we can do about that. Um, it's hard to do when, you know, people are expecting you to furnish them with, you know, fresh produce and, you know, the deer keep coming through and demolishing, you know, what you've done. Um, it's hard to do organic in our soil. I mean, our soil is very sandy, and that's one reason why we have the chickens to, um, you know, help with the soil. You know, a tough growing season. Um, hot summers can wipe out crops. Uh, late frost can ruin things. Um, so it's not a very stable growing environment. Sandy soils, um, either no rain for months or rain for months. Um, so, and over the years, we've had we've had consistency issues with um, with how much product we can get and when we can get it and if we can get it. But through the years we've learned to adapt and manage and look really hard um, and find what we need to get by. But there are times of the year where we are none of the above. We almost always have something local and uh, that might be the eggs we get from Celeste, that might be some of the hams we get from Emil or the fat pack we get from Emil. You know, Celeste has done a great job with the uh, Irish uh, heirloom potatoes this year. We've had those since um, maybe June. And her onions, which is just the crop, just um, 
Uh, she finished up her crop just recently, in fact, since February. So we've always got something going on, uh, but at certain times of the year, uh, like the springtime, March, April, May, you know, 85% of the menu might be local. And then you come into August, and 15% might be. What do you think about that big cow? See, they made the connection. Yeah, they made the connection. <laughs> you want to give me a kiss? <laughs> it's like, no, Pat. No. The chickens are building up the soil. They do an excellent job of, mm -hmm. yeah. Because yeah, what we do is we move the houses, and then after we've moved the houses, then for the for a season, then we go back and plant. It gives us lots of natural natural fertilization, which has helped us a lot. <clears throat> New Super Walmart here in uh, <laughs> in Walterboro. I think this is the most licking I've ever gotten from a cow. Uh, <laughs> um, there's a new super Walmart here in, in Walterboro, and, and you feel like it's a threat to your 14 by 24 market here. Tell us about that. Well, their prices are a lot lower than ours. Um, so people are going there for, for the lower prices. Uh, we have the, the cheapest food supply here in the United States as it is. I know we all have to watch our dollars, but if we keep going to the Walmarts and running the small local guys out, uh, it's not going to help anybody. Walmart, by them getting into the organic, stand to ruin the organic industry because they beat their suppliers down on price. Now you're going to be looking at uh, farmers getting even less for their crop. Uh, the whole organic movement was based on sustainability, raising uh, vegetables and, and crops and animals that the best way possible for nature, as well as the farmer getting a good, honest price for his product. Walmart's going to take that away. Uh, we're already seeing now a lot of big companies coming out of the organic industry. And uh, once the corporations get involved, it becomes a total money thing. And, uh, and I think they're going to just ruin, it'll ruin the movement. 98% of what's in a grocery store, if not higher, is uh, comes from uh, out of state or, or or, or even out of the country, and, and that's all right. But it's ironic that of all the choices you have in the grocery store, the one choice you don't have is to buy local food. It's not near as satisfying after things kind of changed over in the 70s from, from small producers to just a lot of really big producers. The conventional way requires a lot of houses, a lot of hens. But now your eggs cost more than conventional eggs. Yes, they do. Why would a restaurant want to use your eggs instead of conventional eggs? Because the quality is so much better. A lot of times when people are riding around in the countryside and they see some cows grazing or they see some chickens running around in the yard, they have a tendency to believe that's where their um, food is coming from. But um, there's really nothing further from the truth. Um, conventional farms are the way, way most people's food is um, I'll say manufactured these days because that's what it is. It's a business and it's manufactured in these huge houses um, where there's hundreds of thousands of chickens that hardly ever see the light of day. Beef is on feedlots where there's like hundreds and hundreds of cows on a small area. Same with pork. There's hog houses where there's like hundreds, maybe thousands of hogs in a house. Um, these animals don't live naturally. They never very well except for the cows they don't very rarely see the light of day and they're fed manufactured foods that has um, growth hormones and um, antibiotics a lot of antibiotics are used as a growth promotant so you know we're just out doing life you know the way grandma used to do it and you know growing what we eat as much as we can I do go to the store and I buy some things but like I buy butter because to tell you the truth, I don't want to hassle with separating my cream to make my own butter. I've done it. You don't buy margarine? Oh no, that's like, let's see, what was it? One molecule away from plastic? <laughs> no, I don't do fake food. I pretty much shop on the outside edge of the grocery store. I remember one chef in particular, and I said, Michael, we're gonna, we're gonna have eggs now. That's gonna be our new product. He was saying to me, Celeste, don't count on, on chefs buying eggs from you. An egg is an egg, and eggs are cheap. And we can get all the eggs we want delivered to our back door anytime we want. I said, okay, well, I understand that. And so we started off small, and, um, and I 
took a couple dozen around to every chef that we sold to, and it wasn't long before I was getting calls, why are these eggs so different? Restaurant managers, the people in the front of the house, they tell me that um, it's consistently one of the things people go out of their way to comment on. And that's the thing, there really is a difference. It's not just, like you don't have to just tell yourself, oh, these are better. You know they're better. I keep their udders clipped and all the hair around to keep the hair out of the milk. And then I clean the udder and the teats with an iodine udder wash. And then I rinse them with just plain old water. I squirt the first stream into a strip cup just to clear the teat from any bacteria. And then I milk into a stainless pan that has this funky lid to keep any debris from falling in. Probably takes about, hmm, I haven't timed it, probably about five minutes, maybe seven minutes per goat. All right, she's pretty much done. Now, I always dip their teats with this, it's just a teat dip, and it helps seal that um, opening to keep any bacteria from going in and causing her to get mastitis. Now she knows her turn's over, and when I'm milking all of them, I'll put them in here, and then I'll just trade out. Once I'm done, I put the milk on the scale just to see where she's at in her production. And then I just strain. This is for our use, so I use my nice glass milk bottles, and I, I strain into, I have a stainless funnel, a stainless strainer with a milk filter, and I strain right into the jar. You can see I don't touch the milk with my hands at all. I think that's a big key when you're trying to do grade A, and that's my goal is to be grade A. Oop, no crying over spilled milk. <laughs> that happens. And it's that's just, the utter truth, isn't it? That's the utter truth. <laughs> then I take the bottles and I submerge them up to here in an ice water bath. And that is brings my milk down to 40 degrees or less in less than 30 minutes. Once it's cool, I put it in the refrigerator or put it in the freezer depending on you know, what I'm gonna use it for. Sometimes I'll put it right into the pan to make cheese or whatever. All right, you, you willing to live dangerous? Is it warm? No, this is last night's oh, okay. milk. Okay, what's the difference? Mm -hmm. Tastes, Tastes like milk? fresh. <laughs> it is fresh. <laughs> Very fresh. Tastes great. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit sweeter. I want to meet your girls. Yes, this is my one of my newest. Her name's Hannah. Hey, Hannah. Hannah, baby girl. She likes to be petted. She does. Hey, Hannah. They feel like dogs. Yep, and they act like dogs too. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, girls. So they're laughing at you. They're laughing at Doug. <laughs> <laughs> dogs, dogs getting licked and bit. They do. They love the shoelaces, anything hanging down. She and Leah's bad. She she nibbles, but she they don't hurt when they bite because if you look, they don't have teeth because they're not a grazer. They're a okay. browser. Hey, sweet peeker. So the idea that people used to have of getting a goat instead of a lawnmower. You know, no. Not one get work. a sheep. Get a sheep. All <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, sheep. Sheep will take it down to nothing. They're the best rototiller in the world. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> and plus, the, and it's a natural way to do it, and it's not hard work. Right. So you just move them where you want it worked up, and that's how we started the new garden area. Not, but nothing that comes out of your garden goes to market. You're just eating out of your garden. We're eating out of our garden, but you know, if people come to the farm, we'll sell them whatever's extra. But I don't, okay. I don't produce enough produce to take it to the market. I would say we're more a family farm and our kind of our, our goal is to help people learn where their food comes from. I get my seeds from friends. We trade off. Somebody will find something cool and they'll share with me and this I'll share with them. And that's next year's crop. We used to do a lot and sold, sold to uh, Gwaltney and Smithfield. Uh, it's all vertically integrated now. They supply the farmer with the pig. They supply him with the feed and all the medications and all. The farmer's simply a laborer. But he's built these big houses on his farm. The manure goes into a lagoon. They drain the lagoons by pumping them and either using a big manure truck that they spray the manure, spread the manure on the field, or they will use a gun and, and shoot at a big sprinkler. 
which they say you can smell that for miles. Mm. If that lagoon burst, it's the farmer's responsibility. So the major corporations are really not paying the full price of production. The environmental impact falls back on the, uh, on the producer. They also want what they call cookie cutter hogs. They want them all the same. And that's so when they go through the process and plant, they can be done mechanically. And this hog is going to be the same as the next hog, the same as the next. These, these are animals. They're just like people. Some grow a little bit quicker than others. Some grow a little fatter than others. But uh, it's hard to get them all cookie cutter. Uh, I think we're ruining the genetics. We're taking a lot of the old heritage breeds and doing away with them. And we're losing, we're losing quality of meat. Quality's just not there. There, my understanding is there are organic farmers now on the larger scales who actually can use some chemicals on their crops. What's going to be the impact of that? Those that don't aren't going to, you know, those of us that don't use chemicals on their crop aren't going to, aren't really on an even playing field. Uh, we had, I planted potatoes this year. Potato bugs came in and tore us up. There was nothing we could do but hand pick the, t the potato bugs off the potatoes. We'll never grow potatoes again because of that. It's just too labor intensive. Uh, if they can use a chemical, they probably use a chemical on the potatoes and, and kill the bugs, but we're not. Another, and then they can still market those potatoes as organic. organic right. right. Another thing that they've done is uh, free range chicken. People think you put chickens in a, in a pen like this and uh, they can move all they want to and all that, but you have predators, neighborhood dogs, buzzards, hawks, uh, that will eat them. So we keep them in these little houses. The law says, you can have one of these big commercial chicken houses, leave the doors open. If the chickens have access to the outside, it can, they can be uh, sold as free range chickens. But those chickens aren't gonna come out of the security of that house to eat the grass on the outside. Those again, that's again a terminology of the law to help the big people. That's how Purdue and people like that can do free range chickens that aren't really free range. So it's, it's almost like a scam. Yeah, it is. And now they want uh, premises identification. The government does, supposedly because of terrorism. They want all farms to be registered with the government. Uh, they want all animals to be registered with the government. Even if you are a, uh, you have a, a five acre farm, a mini farm, and you have a couple chickens for your own consumption and a cow for your own consumption, you're gonna be legally responsible to have those animals registered with the federal government. Most of your smaller farmers are totally against that. And most of is your- Is that because of cost? Some of it is cost. Some of it is because farming is made up of independent people that they don't want somebody in their business 24 hours a day. But uh, yeah, a lot of it is due to cost. And there's also an economic impact on the community as well. When you go down to a major grocery store and spend a dollar for asparagus from Peru, basically that dollar is gone. But if you spend it with the local farmer, uh, there is a multiplier in there somewhere between four and 11 times where that dollar is circulated in the community before it leaves. I mean, they, their kids go to school here, they get their hair cut here, they're buying their clothes here. And so if you want to prime the economic engine of your community, spend it locally first. You guys take food stamps? We do not here. Um, they do at our local farmer's market. This is the first year that they've done that, um, and we were actually a pilot for that. Um, and also the WIC program, the um, Women, Infants, and Children program, they also use the WIC vouchers at the farmer's market, and also senior vouchers at the farmer's markets. So um, that's you know how we have an outlet um, for organic. So it is possible for poor people to eat organically or eat naturally? Right, okay. absolutely. I would encourage those who have limited means to really be creative about incorporating as many fresh foods as possible because it does pay off. Farmers who use no pesticides and eat organic have much higher sperm counts. And you know, when the amount of infertility that we are seeing around us now that's a pretty significant finding. That is very significant and I'm sure a major motivator for many of the men in our, in our audience right now. That, that I one should would, hope so. You would, you would think so. Our mission is to support local agriculture and artisan producers. And our goal with the magazine is to facilitate the transaction between the consumer and the producer. We want to be a resource where 
our readers can connect with that food and it's like, okay, I'm reading about this, where can we go? I try to give an assignment to most of my clients to make it down to the market because we do support our, our local farmers who are businessmen and women and um, we're getting better nutrients that way. And a step beyond that would be to buy chemical free or even if possible organic. Going back to just um, having more of a relationship with food beyond grabbing a bag from a fast food restaurant, um, going to the market, interacting with food, that, that is uplifting in and of itself. Do you have a problem with McDonald's? Yes, I do, because if you've read Fast Food Nation or if you've even seen Super Size Me, um, the process that McDonald's and most fast food, corporate fast food businesses use are really damaging not just our way of life, but also our bodies as well. If you are what you eat, then I'd really like to know what I'm eating if I go to McDonald's. I understand you and your husband, Matt, do Evo Pizza. Yes, we do. Would you like to come take a look? I sure would. Great. Good, how are you doing? Great, thanks. I'm Brendan. You're Brendan? Yep. Hey, Brendan, I'm Pat. Nice to meet you. Mavish, tell us how this pizza is slow food. Well, uh, Evo Pizza is actually the brainchild of Matt McIntosh, my husband, and Ricky Hacker. And um, we really try to use as many local fresh ingredients as we can. We're not using any gas, we're not using any electricity, no chemicals or fuel. It is just simply wood, mostly um, oak that's coming from John's Island. What temperature does that fire get up to? That fire gets up to close to a thousand degrees and so once your pizza goes in the oven it only takes about three to four minutes to bake. It's incredibly hot, the hearth is nice and hot um, and as you can imagine down here in Charleston it is very hot during the summertime. <laughs> What other ingredients go into the pizza that make it slow food? I mean, is, is there a special kind of crust? The boys make their own um, dough, they make their own sauce, and they pull their own mozzarella cheese. So you know that the product that you're getting is fresh. It's coming right out of the oven to you. We all lead such busy lives, and um, it's important to sit down, take that time, really taste the food, enjoy the food, and talk to each other. It's, it's so much a part of our heritage and our culture, and it's time to come back to the table. Yeah, if, if someone's interested in becoming an organic farm, uh, they can contact the Carolina Farm Stewardship um, Organization and they can help them out. Um, also, their uh, local extension office might be able to help them out. There is a certifying body. Um, there's many certifying bodies all over the United States and world, but we have a local one here in South Carolina. It's um, offered through the Department of Plant Industry at Clemson, so you can check out their website and uh, you can talk to them and they can actually do the certification for you. Food should be celebrated, food should be fun. Um, eating should be good. Eating should be good. Yeah. You can start this up on a really small scale with one house, selling out of your, your backyard or at your local farmer's market or to a local health food store or restaurant. There's, there's really, there's lots of market available and I would encourage anyone to give it a try and we certainly will, are willing to share all of our experiences, all our hard-learned lessons, we have no, no trouble uh, sharing all that. On this show, you've heard from farmers and you've heard from friends of farmers. You've heard from people who want you to buy locally, want you to buy organic, want you to take care of your health by eating right. We really appreciate your making the connection on this show. Go to our website, theconnectionshow.org. We'll tell you when the local farmers markets are. We'll give you a list of ways that you can get involved, ways that you can volunteer, ways that you can make this particular local farming connection. Thanks for watching the show. I'm Pat Job. Hi, smelling. <laughs> Well, Celeste, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for your hospitality here on your farm. You're welcome. And we also want to thank you for making the connection. And this is what we do at the end of our, sh of our interviews, is you put your finger up to mine. Okay. Thank you for making the connection. <laughs> Sean, thanks so much for making the connection. Thank you. Thank you for making the connection. Thank you for making the connection. Thank you. When we listen yes, to the story and we see the world for someone else's Thank you for making the connection. Thank you.
Thank you for making the connection. Thank you. It can help us understand right. them I, as they talk of what's the important in their lives. Thank you for making the connection. We start breaking down those communities, our health, and the <laughs> food movement. That's all different after all. At the positive bit. You've heard about the benefit in healthy living. On today's show, you've heard from. I used to crack up a whole church doing that. Attack helicopters. I, I'm sorry, I just, I can't. I <laughs> People can't. make that mistake all the time. <laughs> Amanda and, well, you tell me about it, Robert. Where, where are we? Right in downtown Charleston on Calhoun Street. Right. Uh-oh. <laughs> How are we doing? This fam. A fresh fruit is in, uh, fresh food. Fresh. He is also uh, qualified to do organic certification for farmers, and that's what he's doing out at, uh, it, no, I'm not, I'm not actually qualified for that. Scratch. All right, okay. we'll just edit that right out. How important is it that people prefer... Pre there you go, Justin, edit that. Uh, We're not so different after all. We're making a connection. Making a connection. Making a connection.